I guess what I would have to say is whenever I think about teaching online, I'm thinking about an individual student. I'm thinking, what is it that they need and that I can provide to them so that they will be successful? Um, because that's the whole point. Um, and, and as a designer of the classroom in which they will learn and I will teach, um, I want to make sure that I anticipate their questions, that I think about what their issues and problems will be, um, and that I make my expectations extremely explicit. Um, and at every point, I'm constantly thinking about them, about that, and I, I kind of try and isolate it to a single individual so that it helps me, you know, focus and relate better. Um, but, you know, I, I am very, very conscious of um, wanting to help them to be successful. And, you know, it could be argued that, you know, you're giving them too much information, you're doing work for them or whatever, and I completely disagree with that. I mean, of course, that could be the case, but that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, giving them as much information as possible that can help them to be successful is not spoiling them or, or, or um, you know, uh, making them not self-sufficient. It's helping them to understand in the absence of a physical person, in the, access, in the absence of being physically present, having all of the information there from which they can make their decisions, from which they can take responsibility from for their own learning and to me what we're doing is helping students learn how to learn <laughs> and um, and to me that is the most important thing is to help the students f understand in this technology mediated environment how to be successful and how to use um, the tools and the information that is presented there to achieve whatever their academic goal is and and to give them as much information as possible and so that's why I use rubrics and I have very explicit course information documentation so it's kind of like a, um, a blown out syllabus um, so it's not just like an attached file that's 20 pages long I actually break it up so that at a glance the student can see these are my expectations, this is how I'll be evaluated, these are the materials for the course, um, these are the tools that I'm going to need to use in the course, these are the readings, whatever, everything that, uh, that I can think of that the student would need to know uh, in order to be successful in the course. And I, I guess I would say, you know, for the instructors to think and to me, this is like a process, it, you know, moving from how I was taught in a very teacher-centered environment to how I would have liked to be taught, which would have been much more learner-focused and learner-centered, giving me choices, giving me options, giving me um, responsibility for my own education, for my own learning, for my own um, engagement. And the way that that can be facilitated by the instructor um, is to is to create an environment in which you provide choice, in which you provide options, in which you engage the students to engage their own interests, to, to activate their own interests, to make whatever it is you're teaching them real to them and, and how they can apply it immediately in their real life. And so to me, this is all kind of a, a convoluted way of talking about being learner-centered. And um, no matter what it is that you're doing, whether you're presenting content, um, whether you're facilitating interaction or collaboration, or whether you're providing feedback or assessing students, all of that needs to be done from the perspective of the student and to be done in a way that's engaging. And, and, and that is... Um, you know, easier said than done. <laughs> um, I struggle with it every day, and I think that I am, you know, I'm very conscious of it. I, I want to be learner-centered, and at every moment in my course, I am constantly asking myself, um, 
you know, am I uh, um, giving my students the opportunity with this response or with this activity, am I giving them the opportunity to learn as much as they can with this, or am I taking that away from them by going off on something that I'm particularly interested in or passionate about? Because I, I can talk about this stuff for hours. I love this stuff. I know a lot about it because I've been doing it a long time, and I'm extremely passionate about it. But it's not about my passion. It's about catalyzing that passion in them. And so at every moment I have to question, you know, am I taking away the possibility of their learning or am I giving them, you know, the ability to learn that for themselves, to, to explore, you know, apply, refute, engage with whatever the concept is? Because if I am doing all of the work, then I am the one who's doing the learning, not them. So it is, it is a challenge. It's not done, it, you know, it's not intuitive. It's not, it, it's not done easily. It is something that you, it, they call it the practice of teaching because, <laughs> because it's something that you have to keep, you know, trying to do and to do better. So, um, so I guess long-winded um, explanation of my advice for a new online instructor. <laughs>